The larger than life story of Kim.com, the most wanted man online. His battle with the US government and entertainment industry dubbed the largest copyright case ever. And the truth behind it can now be seen in the feature length documentary, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And we are now joined on the cafe by Kim.com Court on the Web director Annie Goldson and producer Alexander Bizet. Uh, congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Look, I've been lucky enough to see this. I think it's brilliant. But for those that want to, see a little bit more, take a look at this. The notorious Dr. Evil. The most wanted man online. He's a criminal. He should be in jail. You get him between America and its money, and you're going to have big problems. It's quite interesting that a lobby group can get the White House to move against an internet nerd with military force. He is a parasite, sucking the blood out of the artist. This is the promise of the internet, right? We can share access to all of this stuff. Why are you turning red, Prime Minister? I'm not. All right, fine, until we know the truth. Top story this hour, New Zealand is at the centre of one of the world's biggest internet piracy investigations. Located target, safe rumour. You don't do a raid like this and get away with it. Fuck them. Wow, oh. it's extraordinary. When you look back at the footage of the uh, the uh, armed raid on his his mansion, it seems like it was a movie, and now of course it is a movie. How do you come about making the movie, now, Annie? Do you go to Alex and say I want to make this, or Alex, do you go to Annie and say this is what would be a good story? Well, in this instance, Alex came to me. Although I had been thinking as soon as I saw the raid, I mean, it just seemed like theatre to me, and I thought there must be more behind this. So I was curious, and then fortuitously. Alex, who also on, yeah. happens to be German, so we solved the language thing. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I didn't, I didn't know about him in Germany, and I didn't know about Mega Upload, but I saw the raid, which was completely over the top. And at the time, there were, was a call for documentary ideas for, you know, larger, you know, stories. And I thought, this is one of the few New Zealand stories which are really global. Mm. Just happens to have, happen to happen in, in New Zealand. And then I, you know, needed a director who really kind of can get down to the issues and can't be ripped apart by the critics and all that kind of stuff. And, and he was the right fit for it. And Alex, when you were thinking about it, was it a case of concentrating on the, the copyright side of it? Or was it a case of concentrating on Kim.com as the person? Because he's quite a complex character, isn't he? Well, I don't think they, you can sepa can't separate them. I mean, you need to, his uh, story drives, well, his life uh, drives a story, and therefore you can access the more theatrical, theoretical discussion about copyright or piracy right. and privacy and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they go hand in hand, but his, uh, he is the access point to tell or to delve into the issues. Mm. Annie, did he want to be, did Dotcom want to be a part of the uh, movie originally? Not particularly, I don't think. Mm. And he did play quite hard to get. But I kind of snuck in during the internet mana period when he was quite a public person, so he did get to know me. I don't know if he ever really got to trust me wholly because he knew I had to be independent mm. and I had to be seen to be independent also. We can't do a puff piece on him. No, can that's you? right. Otherwise, the film would have had no credibility, mm. and that's not the sort of films I make anyway. So, um, but. I wouldn't say I exactly won him over, but in the end he was very gracious and granted us an interview a couple of years after we started filming. And then wonderfully we also got access to quite a significant archive of his as well. Mm. Yeah, and, and you know, that, I guess for me, being a New Zealander and, you know, watching this documentary back, what you guys managed to do is make quite a complicated situation understandable for me. I got why he was in the position he was in. I understood what was happening with the copyright issues and the FBI and, and America, and I think that was one of the beauties of, of this documentary because, it, it, you know, quite layered, isn't it? You've got all these different things going on. Did you, at any stage, Alex, feel sorry for Kim.com? I know you probably don't want to answer that. No, no, I can answer that. I mean, I do, do feel sorry about how he got treated by, right. by the government. That's you know, I'm, you know, it's very clear. You know, whether I'm with him on, on, you know, whether he's guilty or not, that's not for me to judge. But right. you know, I do, you know, he shouldn't have been judged. He shouldn't have been treated as he, mm. as he did. You know, I'm quite clear about that. Annie, how much footage did you film for this, and how much did you have to wade through to create this? <laughs> hours. I mean, we had hours? hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage. I mean, I think I did over 70 interviews with some of the sort of smartest people in the world, which was a challenge. And then we had all of the archive. We had all of the court footage. We had all of the backstory. So, you know, it was a challenge, and I have to take my hat off to our editor, Simon Colderick, who um, we, I worked with for a year cutting it. So, yeah, there was heaps of footage. But weirdly, my kind of treatment, the original script for the film, 
It was not that different. And I think, God, why did I spend the last two years? <laughs> <laughs> I should be a drama director. <laughs> Kim.com, Caught in the Web, is showing as part of the New Zealand International Film Festival. For sessions, you can go to their website, nziff.co.nz. Yeah, go and see it. <laughs>